Welcome folks, I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be doing a partnered stream with untapped.gg. It's a companion app that you can use with MTG Arena. Uh, this is what I use to track all my stats, uh, win percentages, deck breakdowns, stuff like that. You could compare it to a bunch of other meta decks, but they also, through pulling in all a bunch of users' data, are able to consolidate a really nice meta game picture. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is a budget deck built on a existing tier one deck that has close to 60% win rate over 850 games. Um, so this is uh, most well known as Crokey's uh, Rogue Mill deck. Um, so the full tiered version has 21 rares and three mythics through it. Um, the version we're gonna be playing today is five rares, three mythics. Um, really what we're saving on is the mana base in this particular deck. We can uh, achieve most of the same effects um, with a more refined or a more basic mana base. Um, so we're going to be playing a budget version and then we'll play the fully tuned version and we get a sample of both the decks. Um, like I said, this deck is currently close to 60% win rate over almost close to a thousand games. So it's a pretty good population. Um, so if you do enjoy the, the, the kind of this more statistical content, you want to track your game, stuff like that, I will be posting an affiliate link in my YouTube description. Um, it is free to use the tool. It tracks all your stuff. I'll demonstrate some stuff during the game. Uh, if you can install the tool, it'll help you along the way. Um, a lot of streamers, a lot of players use this tool and could advocate to it. Um, me, myself personally, I've been using this long before I approached them about the uh, partnership. So if you do want to check it out, if you can click it, just let them know that I came from, that you uh, came from the channel. It would help me out a lot. But now let's pop into the game. So basically, what we have here is the core of the, the mill package, you have uh, Thieves Guild Enforcer, Soren Thought Thief, and Rune Crab. That pretty much are your main mill engines. Uh, you have payoff cards in Drown in the Lock that counter or kill based on the number of uh, cards in your opponent's graveyard. You also have Into the Story, which can draw you cards. Basically four mana, draw four if they have seven cards in your graveyard. You also have Lull Mage's Domination, uh, which can steal some of your opponent's stuff. Some counter spells, then you have reanimation and Egadims and Call of the Death Dwellers. Your rare wild cards are going to Thieves Guild and Luris, and then you have the Egadims as kind of a reanimation. If you're short on mythics, you don't have Egadims. Uh, if you have fabled passages, you can play those. If you have any of the pathways or any of the blue black trinomes, you can also play those as well. Um, we're playing Evolving Wilds as a budget consideration for the fabled passages and Dismal Backwaters as our dual land. The sideboard, you have Cling to Dust for the Mirrors, or any Graveyard decks, Croxa decks, stuff like that. Soul Guide Lantern for the heavier mill focus decks, Negates versus Control, Eliminates versus Aggressive decks, and then you have Mystical Dispute and Lull Mage's Dominance. Um, we might want to do a split and play Heartless Act. I think we might do that uh, just for some of the bigger stuff. Let's do that real quick. Heartless Act in, Lull Mage out. And then Lala Mage is really good against the Gruel Mirror, stuff like that. So I'll play a couple games. Um, like I do with most of the budget content, I'll just do the standard play queue, see how it goes. And then for the non-budget version, we'll play it in the Rank Ladder and Mythic. Um, so this is going to be, I'll do a couple of these budget builds uh, probably once a week, once every two weeks uh, in lieu of the partnership. I'll also be playing a bunch of their tier decks and we can go from there. I always forget the play cues shows. So this is likely the mirror. We'll keep this hand. So like I said with untapped, you have the ability to see your percentages of draws, what's left in your deck, all the details there, how many lands you have of each land. So it's really useful. You can also see like your opponent's stuff, uh, what they've played thus far. Yeah, so it's the mirror, it's a rogue mirror. I think we just get starting. We don't have much like disruption at this point, but we can fill their yard pretty quick. So they are on the Heartless Act main where we're not. Um, here, probably just mill and then put Luris in hand.
because that will put the eighth card in. So then next turn I can lure a sack a merfolk and then play a merfolk. And then if the Thieves Guild finds us something, it could be useful as well. I realize the audio is not on for the game. So Into the Story is a great card here. It'll allow us to fill our hand up again. See if they have a play here. They might be on like dispute, so I might want to hold off with this Luris. This pumps up our squad as well. So they have cling to dust. I think we just pass the turn and into the story on their end step. We'll take that. It's an, if they're just spending the whole, whole turn uh, into the storing, it bodes pretty well for us. There was a consideration to into the story before they fetched the lion so they couldn't flash in something and then drown in the lock. But I guess we only have two cards. This does have a CMC of seven, so it works out. Rune Collapse, very good here. This lets us mill a bit more. Yeah. Nice and easy. Opponents on the full, the full version. Um, cling to dust, domination, disputes. So kind of walking you through, um, generally in this matchup, these wind robbers could come out. Uh, the lull mages are decent. You want your disputes. You kind of want to play like a flash style game as much as possible. Um, Call of the Death Dwellers could probably come out. On the play, do we keep the crabs? Hmm. Maybe trim a thirst. Probably trim a dispute. Trim a lull mage. Just trim a Heartless Act, play it like that. I think we still want to try to mill them out. It's the fastest way. It might be better to trim one crab on the play. Nope. Opponent didn't want to play. The victory screens are taking forever to load. So we'll fire up another one, see how it goes. Imagine put, pulling up rogues and then not wanting to play your mirror. That was with the budget version too, against full budget. As we queue up to the next opponent, just a reminder, if you are enjoying the content here on YouTube, if you can, hit the like button, drop a comment, or if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. All would be greatly appreciated. Opponents on Kahira, so probably control. Put back a Blood Chief's Thirst. Don't quite know it's Kahira, unless they're playing like Beast Tribal. Hands a bit slower here. Not bad. 
Okay, so they are on probably Naya Ramp. Naya Landfall. Glass Casket's interesting here, so I take the Crab. It's the more immediate threat. So the hand's uh, a bit slow right now. We've dropped, if we could have kept this, we could have at least milled them fast enough into, into the story. But now I'm kind of stuck with needing action and lands. Okay, that's not bad, that puts another card in the graveyard. They're at six. That's actually meaningful because it turns off uh, Wind Robber. So there's just Selesnia ramp. Selesnia landfall. Ooh, that's actually very good for us. This makes into the story a thing. Um, let's just kill this this turn because then I want to get the engine of Luris and Wind Robber going. Can be decent uh, to get some card advantage. Go Kahira. That's actually interesting as well. Okay, so let's pop this, draw a card, play Luris, recast the Wind Robber. So now even if they play like Vivian or something, we can kill the Vivian. Elspeth conquers the death. Well, that's certainly something. We'll take the damage here. So we're probably going to... We'll take the Vivian is my guess. So we want to keep this for Vivian. So I can Lull Mage the Kahira. I can into the story. For a removal spell. It's into the story here. This makes it more expensive. So we already played a land for the turn, so we're just going to play out Soaring Thought Thief. This is going to tax us, so I can't hold up Drown in the Lock. So we can do it on their upkeep and then just kill the Vivian before it gets an activation. We should have a chance to do so. Crab should help us as well to thin out their deck. Emiria's Call. Sure. So, let's go Crab, Mill, Oh, there's still the tax. Um, so this is going to cost me three mana. So I can still drown in the lock, which is fine. And dispute. Let's 
get rid of that. Oh, this can only destroy creatures. I'm in I made a mistake there. Should have kept this for Vivian. Yikes. That's a that's gonna be a GG for us. Crank plant, we can't beat it. It's hexproof, like 1010, can't steal it, can't target it. Um so this matchup. Probably want some cling to dusts. And some Heartless Axe. Probably get rid of the Calls. I think Disputes can probably come out and just say like that. Play a couple of Wall Mage, but that's about it. Not going to beat uh, that big boy. Plus they get another card out of their graveyard, out of their library. Um... We'll keep this. So I'm going to get an island here. And then we'll Agadeem's. Uh, so Thieves Guild and play this out. Mill them a bunch. Oh, it's got a pretty cool deck. So this is a Craig Plant Thaleth. It's a 7 mana 6 6 hexproof haste. So here, I think we're just going to be on the kill it or mill it plan. Just going to crack this now. Gonna counter this. I think we want to ensure that we have some sort of threat out there to pressure them. Get another black source here. Into the story's great. That puts the seventh card so we can into the story if they don't play anything we care about. Yarshan, I don't think we mind. Let's just into the story here. So here, Heartless Act, and then we'll attack in. So again, now we can Soaring Thought Thief on end step if they don't play. That's something we're going to want to counter. Don't want him to get the tokens there. Cling to Dust is a nice card as well. We can use it to start drawing. So we have enough to escape it as well, so we'll probably just take a card draw. Shatter the sky. Here, let's get rid of Vivian. That's another good draw. Great draw. Um, so we have three that uh, I think this turn is just Luris and into the story.
Actually, let's lure us and win robber. Guards are down for a turn, but we can kill anything except Craig Plate. It's fine. I have this into the story so we can exile whatever they target. Um, so the question, even with the tax, I'm okay with into the story, so I think we just wait. Have the flexibility of the counter spell. So we should have an opportunity to respond and then exile whatever they target. We'll do this. That's why uh, cling to dust really good. We gain life, but it's not really relevant. It's gonna be a big note for me. Good thing we have this Blood Chief's Thirst. Gargaroth certainly is a scary one. They're thinning out their deck a bit more. Half their deck's gone. Just gonna full control here. Oh, we can just steal their Gargaroth. Yoinks. I'll have that. Um, I'm going to hold off on this crab because I can hold up Drown in the lock. You can flash in this Thieves Guild. Shatter the sky. How about nope? I want a Gargaroth. Okay, so they're on a bit bigger of a plan. The calls might be relevant now that we've seen um, the fact that they're going a bit bigger. Wind robber's okay, Kling was fine. Let's go down a lull mage on the play. Probably play that just cut a crab. Or not cut a wind robber. Crab can mill faster. I think we keep this, hope we draw a blue source. A little awkward, we wanted to play this on one. That's actually pretty good. Gives us another mill enabler. Ooh, Ugin. Happy to see that come and go. Okay, so they have the casket. They're up to six. Um, 
So we probably just do this, play the Evolving Wilds, because then I can into the story next turn. So the budget mana base like hasn't been terrible. Like obviously that gate turn we could have held out another turn and then been able to. So um, this is interesting. I think we just keep smacking them. We're presenting a pretty quick clock. three cards in our yard, so even if they shatter, probably get rid of the, okay, they have two Ugins. They shatter, we have enough, so we refill that way. I'll just target an Ugin. Another Yarchen. Ugin. Okay, I'll keep the drown in the lockup. If they want to trade this, I'm fine. Twenty eight cards. We're attacking in the sky anyways. That's a nice one. Um, here, I think we hold off on the next mill. Opponent's got 18 cards in library. We drown whatever they do. Mill them six more. You got a cat opponent. Killing him in the air, we're killing him, they'll be down to 11 cards at the least. Okay, so I think just as a backup, we'll get another swamp so I can Agademes if needed. counter that and that should be game mill them for four play a land mill them again all right so that wraps it up so like i said if you do want to help out the channel if you can uh there's the affiliate link for untapped gg uh you can see full statistics let me fire that up for you You get a view like this, shows you all the details of the deck, what we played, everything like that. This is from ranked matches. You can also do unranked. I give you the full idea. So my recent ranked, we were playing Rakdos, eight and two with the deck, it gives you the full breakdown, percentages, what you've added, what you've taken away. Um, so it's a really useful tool. Like I said, you can try it out. It'd be greatly appreciated. Otherwise, appreciate the support as always. Stay safe out there and uh, tune in for the non-budget version, uh, fully tuned. We'll be taking that to the ladder on Mythic and go from there. Thanks for watching. Have a great one.